Alright, hello everybody, I'm Rob Duenius, welcome to Sketchcraft, and here I am coloring a scorpion from Mortal Kombat with Copic markers for my latest Game Cave issue Kickstarter. Links are in the video, here we go. So basically I start off with the drawing already done. Um, I draw it myself, it takes about an hour, sometimes two, depending on how fast I am. And then I like to start off with uh, warm or cool grays. In this case it's warm grays. I usually do a very basic shadow layer with the warm gray three. And then once I get that set up, I like to take uh, BV00, which is a very light, like that's called mauve shadow. And that's it's what you see me going over right there is with the mauve shadow. Uh, and sort of tinting the, the gray a little bit to a purple. Um, so it's not uh, sort of stale and dry and everything has a little bit of some purpley colors in the into the uh, the shadows And then I go and do right here in this case is the the skin tones skin tones are a very simple combination of of uh, YR uh, zero 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 which uh, I believe is silk and fruit pink which is EO2 as well as there's a very light pink I'm using in there, which is uh, VO1, which is uh, Heath, right? These are all Copic markers. And so you just sort of see me um, using the fruit pink to kind of add in the basic skin tone and then adding a little bit of the of a blush color to kind of like add a little bit of the pinks back into the rim between the shadow and the, uh, the skin tone and then throwing a bit more purple into the darking, darkened areas of the skin tone. As I move to the fire, it's pretty simple. I'm outlining it with chrome orange, and then adding the basic yellows with uh, maize, which is Y35. And sometimes I do some intermediary blending with uh, uh, pumpkin yellow, but it's mostly just chrome orange and maize. And then the shadow, the basic shadow, what I'll use for the golds is it'll be like a reddish tint to the, uh, the darkened areas. It looks like an orange. And that's actually created by using amethyst, which is a very pinkish purple marker. And when you add that amethyst over the yellow, it just blends together and creates a really nice red without me actually using red or orange or anything like that. So um, it has a nice fluctuating color scheme. A little bit of color theory can help go a long way. Some of the very small white highlights, I'm just throwing in um, a yellow zero zero. Basically my process with Copics is a lot like watercolor. Start off light. Right, get the basic shadow kind of worked in and then start off with very light colors and then build up the darks as you go. Also not using any blacks or dark blacks until the very end. So I can use blacks to really help pop the contrast. Uh, all the other shadows are made up of a combination of blues and purples. So it keeps everything looking really nice and colorful. A little cartoony, but you know, it works just fine for the art uh, in general. So you can see his shadow area on his chest. I'm starting off with some some of the purple, some of the lighter purple, which is Heath, right? And uh, just to get those those little tints in the shadows worked in there. And then around the actual shadow area, I'm throwing in amethyst. Uh, as it dries, I'll throw then I'll throw in cool grays into that area. And just juxtaposing the cool gray against the warm gray just helps contrast um, the two. So. You know, warm grays are really good for flesh tones and stuff, and then the cool grays are good for more like metals, or in this case, his little black uh, shirt hood thing going on in there. And you can see that that it, because I did that base layer, I only had to put the, the dark, dark, cool grays in certain areas, and then I'm blending the difference between the dark gray and the purple with a little bit of blue, and tossing just a, a smidge of the yellow in from the fire to add a little bit of lighting into his chest. And that just adds a lot of little color dynamic, you know? Uh, let's see what else. So there'll be a, just this process of using these basic colors over and over and over uh, for the remainder of the piece. Um, and then what I'll do is once he's all set up and colored, I will apply white calligraphy ink and uh, paint in all these little highlights and stuff that go into him as well. I use white calligraphy ink instead of gouache and acrylic because it's already blended up. I use Winsor Newton calligraphy ink. It's pretty, pretty uh, affordable. Gets the job done. Doesn't warp the paper paper I'm using is B marker paper. It's really nice and smooth and it has a little bit of a streaky quality, which I like. It lets me see all the little marks and stuff I'm doing. Uh, so you can see there, that's the chrome orange applied right over the yellow, which is the maze. And then I'm adding the amethyst in there. And if you look, you can see that that's going to add that nice reddish, almost 
you know, burnt sienna kind of like feel to it. And then pop in a little bit more of that orange color in with the chrome orange and back and forth. You know, if you just let the markers sit for a minute or two, um, you will start to see that they they will they'll have a different look after a couple minutes. And once they sort of settle in, you can then start to add your contrast and stuff. So, yeah, I'm just wrapping it up there with the cool grays around all of his little little leggings and, and bandanas and stuff. The total time for painting or for coloring this was 90 minutes complete. So this is sped up to about eight minutes. Really wish I could color this fast. But 90 minutes isn't that bad. It's eight half by 11. Did it all on live stream. So again, this is all for um, interior art for my new video game magazine called Game Cave. And it's going to be a cross between sort of like a comic book and a game magazine so it has original characters talking about games and getting into arguments and all sorts of zany stuff going on but i draw a lot of the elements no computer rendered marketing mumbo jumbo in here um and then obviously the art uh i sort of sell as commissions uh on the kickstarter as well and stuff like that to help fund the uh the whole project it'll be available for the next uh several days so we're gonna get ready here and this is the white calligraphy ink that's a little liner brush I'm using. Number one liner brush. Look, I have a really long tip. I like it because I can control... The, I'm pretty comfortable with it. I can control the thickness of the brush that way. So, um, that's going to be about it. Once I get done with all the, the white highlights, and I'll throw a little bit of black uh, line work back over it and call it a day. If you have any questions or concerns or comments or whatever, send them to rob at sketchcraft. That's rob sketch craft the name of the podcast.com you can also find me on itunes i'd like to thank you all for hanging out and i will see you on the very next speed paint kickstarter all right go game cave